Okay. Well, here we are, uh, Sunday afternoon, the 7th of March, and we're going to be starting on our Sunday school lesson. If you would, go to the Gospel of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 11. And this is a very familiar story about Martha and Mary and Lazarus. Um, before we get started, I want to give a little um, insight. I encourage you, um, if you um, are looking for a church home or just wanting to go to a different church or just wanting to check somebody out, we have Sunday school at 10 o'clock in the morning um, at Ambassador Baptist Church. And the men meet in the fellowship hall. And we usually have some types of dessert uh, before it starts. So about anywhere from 20 till 10 to 10 o'clock, uh, we eat. And uh, uh, today we had uh, scrambled eggs and sausage and a croissant. And uh, next week we're probably going <clears> to <throat> have some donuts. Um, <clears throat> different men bring things um, each, each week. And it's not required. If you can't do it, no big deal. Uh, so anyway, I want to encourage you about next week. Next week's going to be special. We, today we're going to finish up our study on faith. And uh, next week is the week, it's also time change, but it's the week before Brother Raymond Barber comes to speak for our Beams Sunday. And so we're going to do something just a little bit different. I'm not going to put anybody on the spot. Uh, but, you know, we just this past week had to do a, feel like a sheet about staff members. So, if they needed to get a hold of, like in the case of an emergency, if something happened to me, they wouldn't know who to contact. Other than they just know me because I'm here, they know I'm from Florida. But they really don't know who my immediate family is. And I was thinking about that, actually before this, and that was kind of a, I confirm it. I was trying to think of how we could do something. And people know me as Joe Taylor, admin pastor here at Ambassador Baptist Church. I'll see adult Sunday school teacher. But that's about as much as they know. As some of them heard me talk about uh, my testimony uh, about me being a law enforcement officer um, uh, years ago. and um, But they never really understood where I'm from. So that's going to give me an opportunity next week that I'm going to talk a little bit about um, uh, where I'm from. Um, you know, my staff, the staff here, we all know about our backgrounds. But sometimes our church members uh, don't really know much about you other than I'm the admin pastor and ambassador of this church. Uh, they don't know how long I've been in the ministry. They don't know where I came from. So not to dig out um, skeletons in a closet that nobody wants to talk about. Um, but I'm going to give an opportunity to just say, hey, I'm Larry and this is how I got to Ambassador Baptist Church. Or, hey, this is Randy. This is what I did before I came to Ambassador Baptist Church. Um, but basically, I'm going to give you my spill. And if you'd like to add to it, I, I appreciate it. Uh, not to run it all, but actually to... Uh, try to get you encouraged that you know men have to stick together uh our wives are not in there so a lot of times we will say things uh when our wife's not present and what stays there stays there or what is said there stays there so <coughs> excuse me the pollen is really heavy now and the spring is starting to come around and i'm all choked up and uh so i'm sorry uh for yawning but Pollen, I'm just choked up. Um, <clears throat> but we were talking um, about this morning, we were talking about the three kinds of faith. But before we start, let's open up in the word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we can come to you today. Uh, God, we thank you for the great services we had this morning. God, I can feel the Spirit of God just moving all over the place with the song service with the special music, with the preaching of thy word. We even Sunday school lesson this morning. God, I could feel your presence there like ever before. 
And God, that's just because we pray. We pray for you to help us in our services. And God, we are praying that you will take care of us and that you will come and meet with us every single service. And God, now as we talk about the three types of uh, faith that we have in our lives, I thank you for the opportunity to be the teacher for the adult Sunday school men. Uh, Lord, I appreciate being able, or well, not just for the men, but anybody that wants to come to that class. I do thank you, Lord, for that opportunity to be the teacher. And so, God, I just thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. I ask you, God, to be with us now as we look at the Word of God and how just most powerful you are. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, now we got a little background noise. That's all right. Just ignore that. Uh, um, but anyway, I um, no big deal. Uh, this is what happens when you do uh, a recording in your office after church. And uh, we did a, um, I tried to put phones on silent, but sometimes it's no big deal. So if you heard something in the background, just, just ignore it. You know, no big deal. Um, we're in my office here upstairs at Ambassador Baptist. Uh, so let's look at, we were talking about uh, what I did. My verses were going to start in verse 21. But um, to really get the grips of what I wanted to talk about, the faith, let's go back to chapter, uh, well, 11 and look at verse 1. It says, Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus, of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. Now, right now, now winners, we saw, a, you'll see another Lazarus uh, just right before this in uh, Luke 16, where the rich man and Lazarus both died, and Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom, and then the rich man went to hell. Uh, this is not the same Lazarus. Um, you know, there's other names, uh, several names. There's just not a Lazarus in the Bible. There's several. Um, and so... But anyway, it's, uh, look at verse 2 now. It's in parentheses. And then what it's going to do is tell you a little bit about who these ladies are. It says in verse 2, And it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So if you, if you remember back in Matthew, they had gone... And, you know, they wore sandals or they wore, it's like a flip-flop or a sandal today. Um, they didn't wear socks and so their feet would get dirty walking everywhere. They didn't have shoes like we have. And so you, your, their feet were dirty and so they would always have to wash their feet when they came in and they took their shoes off and then they washed their feet. And Mary was, uh, at that time, was so moved with compassion that she went and washed Jesus' feet and put ointment on them uh, and ointment, probably because, you know, when you're walking in the desert and with rocks and dirt, you're going to have cuts, you're going to have blisters. And uh, so she got ointment and smoothed his feet and um, washed her feet and dried it with her hair. She had a real long hair. And so it dried it with her hair. Um, so this is the Mary that we're talking about. This is her brother Lazarus. Verse 3, Therefore, his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Now, I mentioned that this morning I have two men of God, well, two men in my life uh, that are very dear to me. Steve Adams is one of them. He's uh, known me um, ever since I've been alive. Um, after my dad held me, he was able to hold me as a baby. Um, he's just uh, maybe eight years older than I am. Um, and he held me as a baby. We have He's known me since I've been alive. And we still stay in contact. And then um, my second command on our cops ministry that we have, um, his name is Galen. Everybody calls him Gator Bug. He's from Louisiana. Um, I cannot ask for a better man of God that is uh, knows his Bible and talks to me. And I can talk to him for an hour. It doesn't seem like we've talked an hour. But I sit there and I can tell him and vent to him and it's a blessing that he won't leave me wrong. I've known him for several years now, um, probably 20 plus years and um, a great man of God. And, uh, you know, and I've sat under many a pastor in my ministry 
uh, since two since uh, been in the ministry since '95. And if anything happened to any of those men of God that I sit under and knew personally, um, I would be devastated if one of them was sick. And uh, I would be devastated if they died. I would, it really upset me. So basically what he's doing is, um, she's saying, hey, um, he's sick. And when Jesus heard this, he said, the, weak, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now what he's saying was, okay, he's sick to death, but that's all right, because I'm going to have a chance to show you and, to, and how we can glorify in God. <clears throat> so it says in verse 5, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, whom he had heard therefore that, <coughs> excuse me, that he was sick, and abode two days still in the same place where he was. So even though he knew he was sick, you know, God's God's God, and um, he still hung around for two days, but he, he didn't go immediately to him. He waited two more days. And you say, why in the world would he wait two more days? Well, it's just like when we pray. When we pray for God to help us with something, we want it now. You've seen that commercial? It's my money and I want it now. Well, you, you might be praying to God, but you might want it now, but God might not want you to have it right now. He might want you to wait. It's going to be in God's timing. And here, God chose to wait two more days before he went down there. But he had a plan in this whole matter. But we're going to, cause we're going to, he's going to show us three kinds of faith out of this um, uh, passage. And when he heard, therefore, he had both two more days in the same place where he was. Verse 7. And then after uh, that, saith he to the disciples, let us go and to Judah again, his disciples saying to him, Master, the Jews have sought uh, to stone thee, and goest thou again? Now, here we talk about the disciples. The disciples, you know, there's these guys that hang out with God. They, they see him do all this stuff, and they he hears who he is, and but they're still scared that they're going to get stoned. They're, they're, not, they're, not, they're not thinking of the Lord who he is. They're thinking of, hey God, you know, you're not going to, you know, you might have stopped the waters and you might have allowed P Peter to walk on the water and you might have caused the storm to cease, but hey God, they're going to stone us and there's no way you're going to be able to stop that. And right there, that just shows you their faith was very limited. Um, and then let's jump over to uh, verse 11. And these things said, after that he saith unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Um, Howbeit Jesus said unto his death, they might have thought that he had spoken talking of rest and sleep. And Jesus uh, said, and then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Now, he already knew Lazarus was dead. You ever seen on tombstones where it said, um, he's sleeping in the arms of Jesus, or asleep in Jesus' arm. Uh, when we pass away, we're just sleeping. And so he he's sleeping in the Lord. And he says, hey, I'm telling you right now, Lazarus dead. And uh, so they're going, hold it. How do you know this? You're not even there yet. And he said, well, he's dead. Uh, he just flat told him in verse 14, Lazarus is dead. Now look at verse 15. Am I glad for the sakes that I will not that I was not there to the intent that may believe, nevertheless let us go unto him? Then said Thomas, which is called Denimus, said unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. They're still thinking they're gonna get stoned to death. He said, Well, we may as well go with him and die with him. You know, what you know, what else what, what else could happen? And then said Jesus, he found that he had been laying in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh to Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs long. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them and concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Um, and then Martha said unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been there, 
my brother had not died. See, that's what happens when people pass away. We want to blame God because they died. You know, we have a gap in time. All of us have a gap in time. Uh, we don't know when we are going to pass away. Now, uh, actually, I should have been burning in hell long ago. But God protected me. I had no idea that I would be a preacher one day. I had no idea that I would be here at Ambassador Baptist Church. I would have no idea that I built websites. I would have no idea that I would be teaching the adult Sunday school class. And um, I, I had no idea. If somebody would have told me this uh, back when I was in law enforcement in the 80s and the early 90s, I'd have said, you've lost your mind. There is no way I'm going to be in Texas in 2021. I... I, uh, I cheated death a million times, and I believe that God had his hand on my life, even though I wasn't saved at the time, but he was protecting me because he was going to use me somehow, some way. And so here it is. She's blaming God, Jesus. She's blaming Jesus because her brother, if you'd have been here, he wouldn't have died. And so we, we got to, uh, this right here is showing you that they're human just like we are. We don't need to blame God. It's all, you got to remember, God is in control when he died there was no question he knew it was going to happen um it wasn't a surprise to him um because of the lord you'll find out later that he says that he is the resurrection and the life and then he said that jesus came and found that he was laying in the grave four days now <clears throat> four days in the grave now they didn't have the preparations that they do today um, a lot of times in the state of Florida, um, if you die within three days, they bury you. You're in the ground. Unless circumstances like um, it might be a military person that they have to wait to get the family all together. Or law enforcement, they have a special service. For the most part, three days and you're in the grave. And uh, if, you was, if you died on the Tuesday, you would be in the grave by Friday. And so, um, not that, that they didn't bother you. Some people can't afford that. And so saying that, um, at one time, they didn't embalm. They just put you in the casket, and they put you in the ground because it, because <laughs> by three or four days, you start smelling. And uh, so that's they just stuck to that uh, situation. Um, if it's going to be longer, I've worked at a funeral home after my law enforcement days, and if they were going to be longer than four, three or four days, then we had to do extra chemicals or extra stuff to preserve the body to last that long. Um, extra stuff. Um, but anyway, um, it doesn't matter if you're embalmed. If you're gonna, if you're buried and you're embalmed, you're not gonna be perfectly that same person. You're gonna finally, you know, just start um, deteriorating away, going back to dust. Now, um, let's look over at. Um, uh, verse 22, and now, not even then, whosoever will ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Now this is her comment. Martha goes, um, saith unto me, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me hath he that were dead yet shall be alive, live. I'm sorry, let me get that down right. I get my tongue twisted. Jesus said, I heard, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, uh, him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, that shall come into the world. And she said into uh, uh, said and said also, um, and she sent her way and called Mary her sister silently, saying, "The Master is come and calleth upon thee." Now we can keep going here, and we'll see later that it says in verse thirty-five, uh, Jesus wept. And um, but the, basically, we could go in the whole story. I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but um, basically, what we're trying to show you here is is there's three kinds of faith. Number one, the first kind is, is limited faith. Um, 
he had boat two days. He wasn't worried about it. It's God. And he, on the way there, he even told his disciples, he's dead. And you're saying, oh, okay, well, why go down there? If he's dead, why go down there? Number one, it's a friend. And number two, he wanted to show them a little bit about their faith. Not only Martha and Mary, but also his disciples. You see, the disciples had been with him and they've seen miracles after miracles. But this is what the problem is. Um, I got sick one time and God healed me. But when something else come up, I said, well, God, I don't think you can heal me out of this. You know, I, I, you've healed me through some stuff, but I don't think you can do it this time. And that's what they were saying. Uh, the disciples were saying, okay, we saw you feed the 4,000. But hey, man, now you're pushing it. Now you're talking about 5,000. Uh, Lord, I saw you call out to the sea and it ceased and stopped because you commanded it to. But I just don't think you can heal this person with leprosy. Or if they do that, I can't, I don't think you can do this. And I don't think you can do that. And so what happens is, um, we limit God on what he can do because we don't believe that he can do what he says he can do. We say, well, we did this. There is no way you can do this. I'm going to tell you what. I, Joe Taylor, was a filthy, no good for nothing, lousy, sorry, ungodly man head in hell and Jesus reached down and convicted my heart I realized I was a sinner and I called out to him and asked him to save me and I trusted in my heart and believed that he saved me from my sin if he can save me then you have no excuse and so saying that, I uh, believe in him. I've never seen Jesus like they have. I've never talked to Jesus like they have. And they doubted him. I had to have faith to believe that he was who he said he was. And that if he could change me, then he can change anybody. So um, basically also, he wanted to show people that he could rise again. That he could and he would. Because everybody goes, okay, the Lord's going to take us out of here. Well, how is he going to do that? You know, gravity is holding me down. Uh, the only way that I can get out of off this earth is I have to go up in a plane or a helicopter and jump out of it. And the gravity is going to bring me right back. There's no way that he can take me out of here um, with the gravity that's on earth. Um, it says in the Bible, he's going to come back for you and he's going to bring you, take you up in the sky. The dead... First, and the, and the ones that are remaining alive is going to take up with them. That's paraphrasing. That's swamp language talk. And, uh, hey, man, that's no big deal. I'm going to bring you right on up here. But we can't comprehend that. And the thing is, we don't really believe God can do that. How can that happen? I have to trust that the Lord said he's going to do it. He's going to do it. And um, he created this world. So if he wants us out of here, he can take us out of here. Now, Martha had limited faith. She believed that he could raise him from the sick bed, but not from the dead. Now, okay, God, now I can understand you can pray and heal and touch my brother because you've healed several other people, but raising him from the dead? Uh, now, come on, Lord, that's, you know, that's impossible. And she just didn't realize that the Lord was there and he was the resurrection and the life. And so she had restricted the power of God. And we see that has happened before. And let's go over to Matthew. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew 13, 58. <clears throat> says, And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. If you don't think God's going to take care of you, then he's not. you got to have faith. Now, a question come up uh, by Mr. Peterson that, uh, well, sometimes God might just see if we can handle that, and he might not want to heal you, and then he wants to see how you're going to respond. Fine and dandy. Hey, God, I fell out of the truck two weeks ago. Um, I've hurt my knee. I'm having some problems with it. 
if you feel in your heart that you don't want to heal me, then God help me deal with the pain and i uh, just be content. But I also know that he can heal me if he wants to. And so basically, uh, my, my faith is unlimited because God, if you want to heal me, okay, if you don't, okay, my truck's broke down. Well, I can temporarily drive it locally. I can't drive it a long distance, but then again, am I crying over it? No, I'm not crying over it. Why? Because God's in control. No secret to God, and he just wants me to stay locally, and that's fine. And I don't have a problem with staying locally. And I'm not upset. I'm not crying over it. There's nothing I can do other than just to deal with it, do the best I can, save the money up, and get it fixed. And some people would be panicking. Oh, I got to get rid of it. Go buy me another vehicle. Um, that might be fine with you, but I don't want another payment. I don't want to have to buy another vehicle. I love the vehicle I have. There's nothing wrong with it other than I, I, an engine problem. So I've given it to God. But we talked about this last week. We fear failure. Fear will kill you. We do not need to fear. Yes, are you upset your truck bro? Yeah, I'm upset. Was it your fault? It was my fault that it froze up. Yeah, it was, it was my fault. And I took the blame. Now, I could cry about it, kick my feet and stomp and, and throw things around in my house. Um, but you know what? It still doesn't change the fact that my truck still broke down. All I did was uh, pitch a little a hissy fit and threw everything that I had to pick back up again and put back in its place. Uh, so, be content, stay faithful to God, and He will take care of it. It's His truck. When I bought it, I dedicated it to him. God, it's your truck. Whatever happens to it, it's yours. And if we have that kind of attitude about our vehicles and our houses, hey, God, watch over my house while we're gone. If it gets broke into, well, God, it must have been your will. And we just have to deal with that. And so we just need to have that type of love and that kind of faith. Um, but it also shows... Um, now we were joking about this and, and, uh, you know, I don't really know what all happened there. The Bible doesn't really tell us everything other than they told him to roll the stone away and they're going, hold it God now. Lord, you know, he's been dead four days. And you know, if we roll that stone back, it, the, the stink is going to, he's going to stink. He stinks, God. Surely you don't want to do that. And here you gotta understand, here's 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 Lazarus is sitting back in Abraham's bosom talking to all the other fellow Christians that are there and um sitting there and all of a sudden he goes, What? Angel comes up to him, What? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. I don't want it. I don't want the Lord to raise me from the dead. I have him right here. I'm getting ready to go to heaven one day. And uh no, I don't want to go back and put up with my sisters. No, the things that people aggravate me to death. I don't want to go back and, and, and deal with my neighbor and all that. No, I don't want to deal with my sister. Okay, God, if that's what you want, I'll do it. But I, I really don't want to. Now, I don't know if he had a problem with his sisters and all that. Um, I have three sisters. Well, one's passed away now, but still, I'm going to tell you what. Um, I'm not saying that we have a cushy-cushy relationship, but you know how sisters can get um, and, um, so with saying that, I don't know if I didn't want to come back and put up with him either, you know, but, um, I'm just saying that hypothetically. And, uh, so he said, okay, God, I don't want to be raised again, but if that's what you want to do, then I'm just going to go along with it. But don't let it be for a long time because I, I really like to get back to what I was doing and carry on this conversation with my friends here. Uh, so he goes up, he rolls the stone away. And this is what I really like about, um, it says in 38, Jesus said unto them, groaning himself, come into the grave, and um, it was a cave, and the stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Okay, four days, so what? Four days, a month, two months, who cares? Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Jesus said to her, Said I not unto thee that thou wouldst believe. 
that thou seest the glory of God. Now he's going to say, okay, apparently you don't believe, so I need to show you something. Let me just show you who I am. And at 41, and he took away the stone from the place where he, he, where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by and said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Because here's all these people. They're sitting there mourning. And it wasn't just one or two people. It was people there mourning for them. And he goes, hey, these people ain't believing. So I just need to show them who I really am. And so he says in verse 43, and he said, spoke with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And when he, uh, when he that was dead, come forth bound hand and foot in gray clothes, and his face was bound about his napkin, with a napkin, and Jesus said to him, loose him and let him go. Now, look at this part. He called him by his name. I believe that the Lord said, come hither. Every person that trusted in Christ would have rose up out of the grave. Everyone. And, but he didn't. He called him by name. And you know what? Jesus Christ knows you by name. If you're saved and you're born again, and you, even if you're passed away and you knew Jesus Christ, it says that he comes with a mighty rushing wind and a rushing water type thing. You wouldn't even be able to hear him uh, because it's all jumbled together. But if he said, uh, Larry Howell, Joe Taylor, Randy Davis, uh, James Hunter, uh, George Solomon, Mark Smith, all at the same time, to, it would sound like a bunch of rushing water or wind that you really couldn't understand. We would hear our name, but it would be so jumbled up, nobody would know what it was. And that's what they're saying. It would be a loud rushing wind. They wouldn't know what happened. But what he's doing is he's calling everybody's name that he knows as a child of God, personally by name. And you add all those names together, it sounds confusing. And it sounds like a bunch of water coming down. But then again, it's your name being called. I remember that when I was in trouble at home, if my mom said Joseph Myers Taylor, that was my full legal name, I was in trouble. It wasn't just Joe Taylor or Joe come home. When she calls you by your full name, you know death is coming. And it wasn't death, but we sure thought it was death when mama called you with your full name. But the Lord's going to come back and he's going to say my full name. I will hear it. And you're going to hear your name. But it's going to happen so much that everybody's going to say, what was that? Because they're not going to hear my name called. Because it's going to be all together. And I really believe that's what he's going to do. And so he raised him from the dead and he come out hopping and skipping. And they had to get all the stuff off of him. And uh, don't you think that God can take care of uh, a smelly person? Um, I, I can remember um, I had staph infection uh, one time and uh, there was a person across the hallway that had um, uh, uh, it was no I had cellulitis that's what it was and they had staph infection and there was an odor because of their smell from their sores and don't you think that if God reached down and touched that person uh, that had staph infection, that he would take the odor away. Leprosy is the same way. It's the rotten away of the skin, of the flesh, and it has an odor to it. Don't you think that God can heal a person from leprosy and make him whole? Uh, yes, he can. He can take the smell away. Um, I've been injured. I've had burning flesh on me of my own self, being too close to a fire. Yes, there was an odor, but after healing, the odor went away. Uh, the pain went away. Uh, God can actually heal me. He didn't have to heal me. I could have just died like I was going to die in my sins and had busted hell wide open. And, and I would be screaming and hollering, God help me, God, God forgive me, but it would be too late. And so I believe that when the Lord comes back, he's going to call us by individual name. 
and with his power, he is the resurrection and the life. And I, I brought this up. And this is something to think about. Um, John, the divine, wrote Revelation. And he saw the marriage supper of the Lamb. Did he see you sitting there? No, I'm not talking about we haven't seen the marriage supper of the Lamb, but he has. Because God took him in time and he wrote about the marriage supper of the Lamb. So the question is, um, even though he saw it in time and we're already there, and we're present day just living our lives out, everybody has a gap. I know for a fact that babies die, teenagers die, older people die, and seniors die. I don't know how long I will live on this earth. But every day that I live, I'm going to try to do my fullest to please God in everything I do. And you need to do that as well. I have faith. Yes, I struggle with it sometimes. And I don't understand why I don't heal up like I used to. Um, I fell out of a truck here three weeks ago. Um, we had the snowstorm. And I'm still hobbling around uh, with a hurt knee and a, and a hurt shoulder. And it hurts. I, I'm not going to lie. It's, it hurts. And I'm not healing up to, as fast as I wanted to be. But you know what? It's no surprise to God. And so I have to believe that, God, I want to have unlimited faith. That if you can heal them, you can heal me. Um... I need you, God, and I need you to help me. And so we don't need to limit God. We need to have unlimited. But a lot of times we just have fundamental. Okay, you say you're going to do it, we'll see it, and we're happy. Uh, but we need to look toward unlimited faith. And that's our goal in life, to have unlimited faith. Uh, Mary and them, they doubted. They said, God, you can do this, but you can't do this. And God, I'm telling you, if he can save me, there's hope for you. So with that, we're going to um, be the done on, on that series. Like I said, next week, we're going to be starting. Uh, we're going to be doing that special uh, share uh, um, thing about um, how we can help each other faithfully. And... Um, hold each other maybe accountable um you know i'm not here to take brother mark's place or brother dennis's place but if you need me if you want to talk to me um all you gotta do is contact me and uh y'all have my phone number if you need it if you don't have it then you can uh contact us i'm on facebook and you can just look me up and uh i'll, I'll be glad to talk to you any, any way i can help you spiritually uh, I can pray for you. I can just be a good listener. Um, and also now, after Brother Barber leaves, the last Sunday of the month will be the 28th. We're starting a brand new study on Colossians. I talked to Brother Mark and Brother Dennis this morning, and they've never done a study on Colossians at this church. So this is going to give me an opportunity, a brand new study on Colossians. And we're not going to rush it. We're just going to learn about the Lord Jesus Christ. Four chapters, but sometimes four chapters can turn into several Sundays of learning more about God. We're going to keep learning about God every Sunday. That's one thing you have here at Ambassador Baptist Church. You have preaching, but you also have good biblical teaching. And you can hear a preacher all the time, but until you're in a class where you're learning about Jesus Christ and learning how he can take care of you. Uh, that's the teaching you need. Um, you never get tired of teachers. And uh, God's placed it upon my heart to teach this lesson. It's been on my heart pretty heavy here for a month now. And I've just kind of scanned over it a little bit here, but I'm going to really start digging into it. And I just hope and pray that you'll be able to uh, be at, at our Sunday school class uh, if you're a lady and you're coming with your husband and you want to stay with your husband, that's fine. Uh, but the girls have, the ladies have a class now. And most of the ladies go in there because it can be more personal for them and also more personal for the men. 
So God bless you. Thank you for uh, being here for the study on our faith. And um, I'd hope to see you uh, next Sunday during our Sunday school hour. God bless.